<laughs> Welcome to Cubicles and Controllers, guys. Uh, it's cold as shit, so I'm in my bed. That's why there's this awkward um, romance mood going on right on my bed with my with my turquoise bed sheets. Join me, people. Join me. <sighs> Cubicles and controller. Controllers. Getting, getting weird. Winter, winter, winter romance edition. Yeah. Um. Anyways, let's get into it. It's been a while since our last episode because there wasn't really much going on in the gaming world. And CES just happened. Some, some cool stuff happened. Oculus Rift has uh, some pretty decent competition up against it, which is good because you don't want one thing just completely taking the reins on it. And, and Oculus Rift is extra expensive. Let's not forget that. Yeah. But uh, neither is the, the the HTC Vive. That's what it's called, right? Yeah. HTC, yeah. Um, even though that's backed by Valve, it's a standalone unit, and they're expecting the consumer model to be a thousand dollars. With Oculus Rift, will be um, six hundred. A headset that you need a computer rig for. So, yeah. total thing is expensive. But the unit itself will be hopefully reasonable. Like no, no, no. The unit is six hundred dollars. Okay, it's better than and, a thousand. <laughs> and and you still need a PC with a certain video card to to use to get it. The best so, settings out of it. Yeah. That's that's not mass market penetration. So I mean, that's kind of. I mean, I understand behind the technology and everything, but that's kind of disappointing. So they're going to need some. They're going to need a lot of killer apps for it to take off the way that they want it to. You know what my favorite part was, though? When you said, penetration. Of course it was. Get it. Anyway. Um, so uh, did you have any takeaways other than uh, the VR stuff? <sighs> no. I mean, OK, the takeaways for VR to me is when they release the pricing and the video cards and everything, it it just tells me it's not going to hit mass market penetration. Not Even, yet. I mean, yeah. I, to be honest, man, if, if the if the prices don't come down by a long shot, I, and I, in my brain, I'm talking sub three hundred dollars. I can re, I can honestly see it going the way of three uh, D. No, I I can see that. I think uh, it, it's essentially a early adopter price range uh, we're getting right now. Uh, just like when um, DVD players came out or uh, e even VCRs. I remember VCR units used to be six, seven hundred dollars back in the 80s. And then they dropped to consumer level of a hundred bucks in the 90s, et cetera. Yeah, but because, because it's a niche product, man, I don't know if it's got that much time. I mean, 3D TVs came out and yeah, the prices came down. But at that point, nobody's making content for it. I mean, I've been paying attention to different things happening in gaming. Like for example, like I just started Rise of the Tomb Raider. All right, let's get into that. What are you playing right now? Rise of the Tomb Raider and Fallout Four. Okay, X I'll be playing XCOM Two in about ten days, and I'll be fully like not playing anything else, probably because XCOM XCOM Two is gonna take over for me for a little bit. So get into uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. So far, I like it. Um, it feels different than the last Tomb Raider in the sense that it's got this open world with hub feel, and it seems to be less linear. Okay. But I mean, I mean, I like it so far. Um, I, I'm pro I've probably only played like three, four hours. Oh, you just got it today? No, I just. I mean, I got it like Monday. Okay. So you just started playing today. More or less, yeah. All right. So you're fresh into it. Um, and, and you haven't been playing really anything in your Winter Wonderland? No. The only thing uh, I told you, even from last time, I'm uh, replaying the Uncharted games just because I, I didn't want to invest anything into a new game right now. I'm just kind of, you could say, detoxing from playing games because I played quite a bit. I don't play, like as much as you do but for my for my for my thing 
I was just like, man, I'm playing a lot of games and uh, for, for my own level. And I was just like, I'm going to take a break. So I, I'm just playing Uncharted. It's kind of just a one to two hour getaway for me. Um, so I played one and two, and I've finished those. And I'm going to start three again. PlayStation Network had an awesome sale on Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. It's actually going on right now, and I think it ends on Friday. It's $7.50. I have the original Tomb Raider on the Xbox, but I've talked about it before. It's such a good game, and right now I'm just in the playing an old game where I don't really need to invest into it, and... I'm going to buy the definitive edition, and it's seven bucks. People go out freaking buy this game. It was a good deal when you talked about it a month ago at $20. At $7, it's a must. There's no excuse for somebody not to buy this game. Yeah. Um, Helldivers on PSN is the free game this month. What is that? It sounds like you played it. I haven't played it, but I've been wanting to buy it. Okay. It's, um, it's like a four-player co-op shooter that you can play online, offline, top-down. It got really good reviews, and since it's the PS Plus game, I'm going to go ahead and get it. You should download it, because actually we should start playing Halo and that and posting videos soon, if I can get you playing something periodically. Yeah, uh, the reason I haven't got it on Halo, and this is irrelevant to the podcast, is a buddy of mine, his uh, Xbox's uh, power cable um, burnt up through, through a power surge or something during the snowstorm last week. So I gave him my cable since I wasn't using my Xbox. And I just got it back today. So I'll, I'll pop that in again. Um, do you see a major improvement in aesthetically from Tomb, uh, Tomb Raider to Rise of the Tomb Raider? Maybe, but the original Tomb Raider, the first Tomb Raider was on PS3 and 360 and PC. Yeah. I, think. I had it on PC. So going from PC to Xbox One for Rise of the Tomb Raider, it looks similar. But that might be because I'm, I went from PC to Xbox One. And that's um, what I was getting at. Uh, the. And as big a fan as I am of the Tomb Raider game, uh, the 2013 one, I'm incredibly excited about Rise of the Tomb Raider. I just haven't bought it because, um, first of all, just to take a break from new games. Second, uh, it, it, from all the trailers I saw for Rise of the Tomb Raider and the reviews I've seen, it, and it, it essentially almost looks the same way that the Definitive Edition kind of does. and. The reason I also bring that up, I wanted to tie it into that uh, yesterday, which is January 27th, they released screenshots of the PC Tomb Raider. If you want to talk about a drastic difference in what a game looks like from PC to console gaming, yeah. holy crap, PC exactly. Tomb Raider. The, the amount of detail going on in that it's it's just immense yeah that's and that's that's i really wanted to get it on pc but i have a i7 with a gtx uh 660 and i think i could run the thing on minimum settings and that wasn't going to be good enough hopefully in a couple months i'm going to get a new pc and get a either get a titan video card or 980 GTX 980 shots, right? Huh? You've seen the screenshots? Yeah, dude. Um, talk about like I'm being I'm being impressed by a lot of stuff going on in current console gaming, but that the high settings on that game just impressive. Um, have you and, and what I'll do? I'll include the screenshots in this video so people have something to compare it to. Have you noticed that a lot of the Xbox One's games are coming to PC now? Yeah. Like, like uh, to, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, which it was widely known that was coming to PC. Um, what's that Remedy title? Quantum Quantum Break, I think? Yeah, Quantum Break. 
that's coming to uh, PC. Um, that was a huge initiative that Microsoft was trying to push for um, getting a lot of games kind of going on both sides, the partnership. If they if they start letting you play cross platform, that'd be cool. But I doubt they do that. Even Killer Instinct. Well, I mean that's an older one, but that's on PC now. It's oh. almost it's almost like every Xbox One game almost is coming to PC. Yeah. Um, Third party. On two, what I've been played recently is the Killer Instinct because that was a free game for last month. And and that's what I'm saying. We have that man. We should upload video of me whooping your butt on that game. You probably would. I've never, a, I've never actually played it. I played it like once. It's it's actually really good, man. I I um, it, it, it's a lot of fun. It's easy to control. It's really fine tuned. It's tight. Um, it's it's a really good fighting game. I I was discounting it, even though there's been good reviews on it, was because it was a essentially a free game with add-on characters that you purchase or packs that you purchase. Right. Um, but even if you buy the whole thing, it's pretty cheap. So I thought it was one of those rehashed games. Yeah, there, there's better looking fighting games out there, but it still looks pretty good and it's a fun game. Now, um, the Division beta starts like next week and I hope the Division is pretty good. If not, then my next hope is uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. But uh, both, of those, both of those better be good, man. They yeah, man. they looked a lot, like a lot of fun. But as time progresses, my expectation softens up for them a bit because uh, it, it, especially the division, because when they first introduced it, it was it looked amazing. But I think. Games are getting to a point now where that would just look like an average game. Well, I just, like I said, the beta comes out, I guess it's, no, it may be tomorrow. The beta starts tomorrow, I think, and then um, it comes out in March. If that one doesn't play like I wanted to play, my, the only hope I have left is Ghost Recon Wildlands in the multiplayer standpoint, because with Ghost Recon Wildlands, I don't believe there's any PvP. It's just like a one to four player co-op open world you know y'all can split up and do totally different missions or do them together and that game looks sweet i really hope that one there's like that one and a few others that are really my hope for this year uh the just cause three i played it um of course as all the reviews have said the story is nothing special but it is so fun man it's so fun to play um it but all the just causes are really fun to play and this one just feels like a next gen version of it um it's it's fun enough where you forget that the game is mostly the same as the last two iterations uh it highly recommend it it's not going to blow your mind it's just a good time so you have been playing it i i, I played it uh for a couple days but i was like i'm gonna take a break from it um, th that's when I decided I'm not going to play any new games right now. What's free on Xbox One this month? Uh, um, nothing spectacular. I remember just being underwhelmed by it. Hand of Fate and Sticks Master of Shadows. Hand of Fate actually um, got pretty good reviews on PC. So that one is interesting. And Sticks, I'll, I, you should probably download both of those. They're actually pretty decent games, especially if you can get them for free. You might be surprised with Hand of Fate. Um, Have you seen the trailer for Primal Fear? Oh, sorry, not Primal. Far, Far Cry Primal. Primal. I yeah. saw it, man, but I watched some gameplay, and the gameplay looked kind of mad at me. Yeah? To me, yeah. It just looked like Far Cry 4.5 or at this point. I will agree. I will agree with you exactly on that. I, they... they um, Far Cry 4 looked so good that I feel like they're just piggybacking off that engine versus breaking new grounds with it. It's just a new setting. And the thing is, they got to treat it, and it, it, they're, trying to, they're treating it as a, a cash cow series right now because it's doing so well. And 
but that that's Ubisoft, right? Yeah, but they yeah. they have a formula though. It's like once they get a game, it's kind of like they did with Assassin's Creed Forever. Yeah, you play, you play them all the same way. Like from game to game, they they might add a little bit, but it doesn't really change. Yeah, because uh, Far Cry Four came out for the last generation and the current generation, so they were still building the game based on last year's uh, last gen specs and w what it could handle. And while I haven't completed, like I barely started my Far Cry Four. From what I can tell and from what I've read, and I'll probably still enjoy it, but it seems like it didn't change much from Far Cry 3. Oh, no, it didn't. It didn't. But it's, it's actually, um, the characters are more tolerable and more interesting, too. Yeah, because in Far Cry 3, the, your character was so bro-ish. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Far Cry 4, he's not a bro. He's not a douche. And... Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll probably still play Primal because the games are good, but the the mechanics of uh, of the game. Um, let's see what happens, man. They're pretty much uh, they got good feedback that it's cool to ride an elephant in Far Cry Four. Like, hey, let's do this for the whole game and just put it in uh, medieval, not medieval. Um, Neanderthal times. Yeah, I think I think a great alternative to Far Cry Primal is uh, there's a PlayStation game called uh, Michael Ansel is making called Wild, and if if you look up video on that, that that seems to be a great alternative, like supremely better. You should look it up, like Google it on YouTube. Uh, it's a PS4 game called Wild. It's a it's it looks like like it has a lot of innovation not along the same lines it's a different type of game but from an innovation standpoint kind of like horizon zero dawn for playstation 4 which i think we've talked about before yeah so you know there's there's some good things coming out coming out this year and hopefully starting in you know march we'll see some of that there there should be the new deus ex i think is in march unless they moved it back Hitman. Got the Street Fighter, um, middle of February, Street Fighter Five. Yeah, I don't... Uh, I'm actually going to wait on that just because, you know, Capcom will fool around and release a Super Turbo Extra Hyper Edition. <laughs> they've got a they've got a hard-on for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, beginning of the year, we're approaching February. I'm sure we'll have a lot more to talk about towards the end of February when we start getting new videos and releases of because that's a lot of games are going to start coming out around say march have you seen final fantasy uh 15 oh i've seen, um, I've seen the trailers yeah well like uh, there's a demo on ps4 well i think you had to had to buy final fantasy agito which i did and the demo is there's no more pause and play it's action but the graphics like I should show you some of this stuff. We need to go to share play sometimes so you can see some of the stuff I have, or you can just look up look it up on YouTube again. It's it looks pretty nice. Plays Dude, pretty nice. Uh, so apparently, is that the game that came out what uh, ten plus years ago that they did a remake of? Is that the Final Fantasy you're talking about, or are you talking about the? Brand I'm talking new? about fifteen. I'm talking about Final Fantasy fifteen, not not the Final Fantasy seven remake. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, 15 looks amazing as it is. Yeah. Where, the old remake? That looks clean, too. That's an impressive upgrade, man. Because th that was probably one of the most hyped games from my college years. Or I can't remember when it came out. Late 90s? It came out, or? It came out in 97. Mm -hmm. or, I'm sorry. It came out... The... I think it was spring, yeah, spring of 97. Okay. So I was still in high school, but I remember the hype behind that game. It was, and I, it was original PlayStation. It was four CDs. And, um, and it was, and it was awesome. The whole movie was awesome. I mean, the movie, whole game was awesome. And see, I never played it, but I remember just going like, holy crap, this game is four CDs. 
how insane is that? And then I, uh, I saw the footage for the remake. And I was like, this is an incredible remastering of it. I mean, they, they've completely changed how it looks and everything. And it apparently it follows the story and the mechanics almost the same with some more modern fine tuning to bring it to the modern age. Yeah, I think they're supposed to make it a little more action based, but it's it looks pretty good. But that's it on my end. What do you got? That's it, man. Um, like I said, we should have some more stuff coming up in February. But for right now, that's that's about all I got. 